Man, the way social media has um, completely changed how we interact is just wild, right? So that's what we're supposed to hear. Let's just... AI is uh, changing. <laughs> For today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a very lifelike new text-to-speech release called Orpheus text-to-speech. Now, this just came out a couple of hours ago, and something I've noticed immediately with it is that the actual emotive capabilities of these synthesized voices, meaning the way you can actually have them laugh or make human-like noises, is one, very interesting, and two, very funny for the humorous folks among us. So with that, we're basically going to take a quick look at the GitHub repository here, and then we will go through the steps to install this locally and test it out on our machine. I should note two things. The first is, it is a little kind of difficult here to actually get it set up and running. You will see that there is a bit of under the hood tweaking that needs to happen here. And two, as it sits right here, this really requires a pretty heavy duty graphics card, meaning a 3090 or other 24 gigabyte card. However, there are some optimizations that folks have successfully tried as outlined in the issues here, where someone was able to get it working on a 12 gigabyte video card. So with that, I do just want to get the kind of barriers to entry out of the way as with some of these speech models they can be rather graphic intensive. Now with that we can just see that Orpheus is an open source text-to-speech system built on the Llama 3 backbone. It demonstrates the emergent capabilities of using LLMs for speech synthesis. They offer some comparisons below to kind of state-of-the-art closed models like 11 Labs and Play HT in the blog post as we can see right here. We're not really going to go through the technical and things of that with this. We are just going to play with it more, but this is a release by Canopy Labs and you can see the blog post right there. The only other prerequisite that I want to make note of here is that the actual model is gated on Hugging Face. So what this means is you have to agree to share your contact information to access the model. In addition to that, you will also need to be authorized and logged into the Hugging Face command line tool on your machine so that when you do try to run the scripts that will initially download the model, you don't face any access related issues. So with that out of the way, we can just continue scrolling down here in the GitHub repository. They do provide three models in this release. One is a fine-tuned model for everyday TTS applications, and the second is a base model trained on a ton of English speech data. Now, the only other thing I want to show here, because there is a Google Collab option here if you want to play with it as well, which is not really something I'm interested in as I like running things locally and not in notebooks, but it is there, so it is worth kind of pointing out. The other thing down here, if we scroll down all the way, the checklist for the actual future releases here is very enticing because they want to release smaller models. So a 1 billion parameter version, a 400 million parameter version, and then a 150 million parameter version. Now, this is exciting because this would really lower the barrier to entry in terms of what computational power you would actually need to run this on your local machine. So this model here would be very tiny and awesome and I will be immediately jumping on this one to try it when it does come out. With that, we're basically going to go ahead and actually begin by setting this up on our local machine, getting all of the tweaks necessary to get it running, and then we can just go ahead and kind of play with it. There is some voice cloning stuff here and things like that. However, for today, I am just going to be doing a quick, simple test and we'll jump into it. So I was editing this video, but 15 minutes ago, they updated this repository and they mentioned that downgrading to VLLM may resolve some of the issues. So I'm going to keep in the instructions that I showed because they also included something that allowed this to run on more efficient GPUs. So like a 12 gig card. In addition to that, they also added this section right here where you can check out one, this lightweight client to actually use it with LM Studio, which would be pretty easy. And there is a GGUF right here. So this will obviously allow you to play with this in a much more um, graphically happy way. It'll take up less VRAM is what I'm trying to say. And then they also showed this, which is just a Gradio web interface where you can actually go ahead and play with this. So obviously this would be much simpler than what we did where we were kind of just running it through a Python script. So this is cool to see and something that you'll probably want to take a look at. I would probably recommend running this. Um, it's likely easier and it will work with Windows if you have WSL set up and everything like that. So I wanted to just add that to the video. While not referenced right here, the first thing I am going to do is create a new Conda environment to do all of this work in. 
Now I am using Python 3.11 in this environment as I saw someone else in one of the issues tab had been using this and successfully got this running on their 12 gigabyte video card. So I figure why not just kind of stick with that. And once we have this repository activated, we can simply go ahead and just sequentially follow the steps from the streaming inference example section. We will begin by cloning this repository onto our system. Once that's done, we are going to change our directory into the cloned repository and then install the actual packages required for this. It does use VLLM under the hood, so that is just something to kind of make note of. Once step two has been completed right here, we are actually needing to go ahead and make sure we can download this model correctly from Hugging Face, which encompasses a couple of things. I will quickly just run through these as normally I kind of just mentioned you need to have this done, but I figure we'll quickly show it. First and foremost, you need to have access granted to the model. So if you are logged into Hugging Face, there will be a message here basically saying you need to have access granted and you can click like agree and share contact info and that will go ahead and actually give you the granted access to the model. The second thing you'll need to do is now make sure that you actually have Hugging Face Hub installed as well in the environment right here, which will allow you to log in and authenticate to your Hugging Face account using the Hugging Face dash CLI tool. So once we've done that, we can type hugging face dash CLI and then who am I? And it will show you who you are. So in this case, this actually means I am all set and already authenticated. However, if you needed to log in, you would just go and generate an access token from your actual hugging face account. And there's a pretty simple way to do that using the hugging face CLI tool. So I quickly did just want to mention this as another prerequisite and kind of briefly touch upon how you go about actually getting that set up. Following that, we would normally be able to just go ahead and run this example right here. However, this is where we encounter a couple of issues. To put it simply, this script is not going to work as is. We need to actually make some changes for this. And fortunately, this was kind of mentioned in the issues tab. It is now a closed issue, but this script as it sits right here will just give us some errors. So essentially, all I'm going to do is go into the file browser, go into the cloned repository for Orpheus TTS, and I do already actually have the fixed script, so I am going to just paste it in right here, and I will put this on GitHub as a GitHub gist or something like that, so that you can do basically exactly what I do right here, where you copy paste it into this directory, and that solves the first of two issues. <laughs> So with the fix script in right here, we're not really going to go over it, but the fix is pretty simple. It's just kind of wrapping this uh, like actual logic right here so it doesn't give us an error, to put it very simply. But that is the first thing that we needed to basically take care of. Now the next thing we're actually going to need to do involves a tweak that will also allow this to run on a 12 gigabyte video card. So this will help us optimize it as well. As we can see, when we initially run that script, Ideally, it will go ahead and actually download the model weights and everything like that. I've already done that because I've tested this on the system, so it is cached on my system. But when you run this example for the first time, it will download the necessary files, assuming you're authenticated on Hugging Face, etc. But the issue we encounter is one right here where basically it is just trying to allocate way too much memory, more than our system has available. And this is a 24 gigabyte card and it's still giving that out of memory error. So this is a tweak that needs to be Kind of adjusted so we can actually run this on our system. To fix the error where it has run out of memory, we are going to need to kind of dive a little deeper under the hood and navigate to where we find this engine underscore class Python file. And we will append some arguments here for VLLM that will just allow this to use far less memory and actually be capable of being used on a 12 gigabyte card, as we can see here. Now, if you have done what I have here where you installed this in a Conda environment, the following that I show right here will be fairly closely applicable to what you are going to want to do. So this path right here is the actual ultimate location of where we will find that engine file that we need to modify. And from in here, we are met with this engine underscore class Python file, which is the one that we are going to want to modify some of the arguments with it. I will just do this within Visual Studio Code as it will make it a little bit easier for us to actually go ahead and modify, visually at least. So we are going to just go down to the setup engines function right here on line 41. And once we are in there, it is really quite simple as just going ahead and copying these arguments as they are listed right here, which I could just do that way as well, and then pasting them in. So we are basically just going to replace this entire function right here with the one from GitHub. 
And now that that's all set, we can see that we've reduced the max model length, we've reduced the maximum amount of memory utilization on the GPU to 80%, and we have changed some of the quantization schema, I suppose, if you will. Now, something I am going to do, now I will leave that just as it is, and now that we've done that, we can save it, and finally, <laughs> after all that, we will actually be able to go ahead and run this example file right here, the slightly modified variant as we saw previously. So python example one dot pot and once we have done this it will go ahead and basically just generate a text-to-speech thing of this voice right here we will be able to kind of keep an eye on the video card utilization up here in nvtop now keep in mind it is set to use up to 80 percent of my specific card which is a 3090 and once it's done, we're basically going to see a bunch of like warnings and errors or things like that that we can kind of ignore. We will see the actual time. So in this case, it took 12.1 seconds to generate 14.3 seconds of audio. And once the generation has completed, we can just basically go into the cloned repository for Orpheus TTS. And we will be met with the output.wav, which will be the first text-to-speech thing that we hear from this generated locally on our own system. Man... The way social media has um, completely changed how we interact is just wild, right? Like, we're all connected 24-7, but somehow people feel more alone than ever. And don't even... Man. So... That's quite good and quite human-like just in terms of some of its inflection and things. Again, I guess I'm not really going to try to um, analyze it, but it speaks for itself. So now that we have all of kind of the pain in the butt stuff done and we can actually go ahead and play with this is where it gets a little more entertaining and kind of fun I suppose you could say. So in order to bring some more entertainment here we are going to just see how we can simply go ahead and actually change some of what it says and things like that from within this example script that we are running right here. So the prompt for it is right here. The voice selection is right here and there are a bunch of different voice selections that we can choose from. So the voice selections are Tara, which is the one we heard here, which is supposedly the best one. Leah, Jess, Leo, Dan, Mia, Zach, and Zoe. I think let's just go ahead and try Zach just to see. We'll try a random one. I probably won't try them all. I suppose we could, but that may be kind of uh, boring after a little bit of time. <laughs> so we'll just add Zach in there, and then we'll go ahead and run this script again. And it will basically generate the same prompt, but using Zach's voice, so we will get to hear him. All right, 11 seconds to generate 14 seconds of audio, and we'll be able to hear Zach right here. Man, the way social media has um, completely changed how we interact is just wild, right? Like, we're all connected 24-7, but... I'm not going to make any comments about Zach, but that's the, <laughs> that's the voice we heard, and, you know, not bad. Now, <laughs> this is where it gets a little funnier, so I'm just going to change this back to Tara, and I am going to go ahead and kind of get rid of most of this prompt right here, because, well, eh, it's kind of, uh, I suppose, depressing, but <laughs> I want to showcase something that I think is very funny and that is the tags in here that will allow it so the emotive tags where it can laugh chuckle sigh cough sniffle groan yawn and gasp <laughs> All right, so I've used ChatGPT for something it's funny with, where basically it generated a sentence, but it injected each of these emotive tags in between each word in the sentence. <laughs> so now we're going to go ahead and basically just test it with that, and this will sound rather funny, I would imagine. I've only tried this in actually doing it with the default one where I just injected some of the laugh tags, like two words, and it was funny, but... I think this will be weird and funny, and I am kind of interested to see how some of these sound. All right, it has completed. Let's just see what the sentence is supposed to say. AI is changing the world faster than we ever imagined. Okay, so that's what we're supposed to hear. Let's just... AI is changing <laughs> the... Oh, fast. All right, so <laughs> you can see why I found these. <laughs> you can see why I found these emotive tags to be of great interest because they <laughs> they obviously can do things that are. <laughs> <laughs> that are kind of funny. I'm going to take a moment to collect myself and then 
maybe just try this again with one of the other voices. So, all right, let's, 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 let's try Dan. You know, like there is a bunch of other stuff in here. Like there's some web example or something of that sort and, and the one shot voice cloning. But to be honest with you, for today's video, I'm just going to mess around with it like this. <laughs> um, all right, so this time it's just only laugh tags in between each word in this sentence. Now, something to note is if you notice it cuts off the audio sometimes quicker than it actually would, so it doesn't generate the entire sentence we put in. That is related to the changes we made in that engine Python file where we concatenated some of the maximum length and things like that so that we could save memory. So just something to kind of make note of there. However, for our purpose, it's... You know, still hilarious. <laughs> All right, so Dan has finished where he will be laughing in between each word in, in the sentence. So. AI uh, is uh, oh, he's uh, British transforming uh, uh, expected. AI <laughs> uh, is uh, uh, transforming uh, uh, expected. <laughs> All right, so so Dan is obviously of a, uh, uh, I won't say specifically British. I did hear some slight Australian in there as well, but, you know. Um, all right, so uh, let me just think of, like, a couple more things to do. But I basically just wanted to show how to get this thing running locally because it was really, like, difficult. So that's going to conclude the video. As I'm sure you saw, this is actually extremely funny to play with. And I did want to just show all of the steps to install it, even though it was probably a bit verbose at times and things of that sort. But there were some tweaks that needed to be made, etc. As we saw, they did update the actual readme with a few other examples of implementing this with web interfaces and things like that, as well as mentioning downgrading the VLM version. So Perhaps it will get easier to actually get this set up and running. I would probably recommend just trying the Gradio web interface example that we saw kind of on the GitHub right here for Orpheus TTS dash web UI. But with that, this was pretty good, very fun to play with as we saw. And if you're creative, you'll probably find some creative ways to play with this. And with that, that's going to wrap this video. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions.